Hi, my name is Sean Nilsson, and in this video, we will look at some of the different workflows you can use when animating. While animating, we'll be using the dope sheet extensively, and I'll be covering this in depth in a later video. I won't be able to cover every single aspect of animation in this video, but I highly recommend getting the Animator Survival Kit by Richard Williams and also check out the 12 basic principles of animation. You can find links to both in the video description along with links to documentation on the dope sheet and ghosting views. There are many different ways of doing animations in Spine, and I'll be showing you some of the different workflows. You'll probably quickly find the method that suits you the best. First, I'll cover straight ahead animation. The time-lapse video in the background is me animating a small jump using the straight ahead approach. With the straight ahead approach, you pose each frame sequentially from start to finish. Ghosting lets you see the last few frames so you can easily judge how fast things are moving. Because the animation grows one keyframe at a time, the action flows naturally. This makes it a great fit for animations that are based on physics or follow a path. It can also be very useful when you're not exactly sure how to approach an animation and can plan everything out from the start. A drawback to this approach is that it's easy to lose focus of the animation's goals. The animation may become longer than intended or end up in a wrong pose. Straight ahead can also be more time consuming because so many keys are placed throughout the animation. So going back and changing a pose in the middle of the animation requires many frames to be adjusted. While straight ahead can be very useful, animations based on specific poses like walking or running can be done more efficiently using the pose to pose approach. In the background, you can see me using pose to pose to do the same jump animation as before. Pose to pose animation is done by first identifying the most important major poses of the animation without considering timing. These major poses show the entire range of movement with the least amount of work. This gives a good idea of what the action will look like early on when making changes is still easy. Once the major poses have been perfected, then the timing between the major poses is adjusted. In the end, the motion between the major poses is then filled in, and the animation will nearly be complete. Pose to pose is ideal for most animations because it focuses on the most important aspects of the animation first. This greatly reduces the amount of adjusting needed later on, which can save an enormous amount of time. Pose to pose also makes it easy to visualize your entire animation before painstakingly adding the details that really brings it to life. 
The drawback to post-to-post -to -post animation is that your animation can end up looking choppy or robotic if the movement between major poses is not done well. Layered animation is done using multiple passes, animating only a subset of the skeleton each pass. In this animation, the raptor dictates Spine Boy's movement, so Spine Boy is hidden to avoid distraction while the raptor is animated. It would be much harder to animate both the raptor and Spine Boy at the same time. It is often useful to combine the techniques, for example, first using pose to pose only for movements that must be in the animation, and then going over the animation multiple times using straight ahead combined with layered animation. Secondary motion is motion generated as a reaction to the primary motion and makes the entire animation feel more natural. Often secondary motion is slightly delayed from the primary motion, for example here are items such as a scabbard or cape typically move or bounce as a result of the character moving. If these items move together with the primary motion, the animation will feel robotic and unrealistic. Here I'm adding secondary motion to the hair and spine boy. Secondary motion is often done as the final polish for an animation. If done too soon, it can make editing the major poses difficult. Curves allow the animator to adjust the speed of a transition between keys. If all the parts of a skeleton are moving at a constant speed, the animation can end up looking robotic and lifeless. Here I'm adjusting a curve on Spine Boy to make his jump look more natural. I hope you found this video helpful. In the next one, we'll cover some of the different attachment types you can use. So. Bye for now.